Hello my YouTube peeps! <laughs> uh, today I have something, just a little quick short video. Uh, I figured I would do this one because if you've seen my uh, Isshin uh, E010S review, you might think that I didn't actually like this quadcopter a lot. But the reality is, is that I thought it was pretty freaking amazing, especially after what you see here. So uh, this video is just a quick one. Uh, just want to go through some of the uh, little mods you can do uh, that I have found have greatly improved uh, my uh, enjoyability for this particular quadcopter. So to start, uh, if you haven't seen my uh, Ishin uh, E010S review, uh, click on it. I'll put it in the description. I really think it's a cool little product, and and I think. Um, it's pretty awesome. So I recommend it for everybody. I'm not going to go over all the details again because that's in the other video. But uh, in this video, I just want to go over some of the things that I think uh, I found uh, in a very unscientific way, <laughs> just through flying, that make this video, this uh, quadcopter uh, so much better in terms of performance, uh, controllability, etc. So the first thing uh, that you're going to see is that I uh, don't have the camera it comes with, which is the Ishin uh, EF02, which is a big, tall uh, camera that goes on top of it. Um, it's actually a great camera. It comes with a cool relief antenna. You get amazing reception pretty much anywhere. Uh, but what I didn't like is that it made it so tall. It was kind of all the way up to here, and uh, that kind of sucks when you're trying to get this into little tiny uh, crooks and, <laughs> and crevices uh, in your if you're flying indoors or, or just somewhere where you're trying to do some proximity training. Uh, so I uh, instead got this little camera, which is a Bold Clash uh, F01, I think, and uh, that you know made a huge difference because, as you can see, it makes it much more low profile. Now you'll argue, well, it still has this thing up here, but the reality is, is that those flatten out. So if you're going through something and you hit something, yeah, it might uh, make you wobble a little if you hit the antenna but uh, it gets out of the way pretty quickly and it is still shorter because the top of the antenna here only goes about as high as the bottom of the camera itself, not counting the antenna for the original camera. So that was a huge improvement already. Uh, I'll say the quality of the image isn't as good as it is on the EF02. Um, it handles light not as well, but I think just if you're going to be flying this and you really want to be flying this uh, kind of as a fast quadcopter, getting rid of that tall uh, camera really does help. I am going to use that camera for another project because I think it's a great camera. But for now, uh, this works really amazingly well. So that was the first thing that I did. The second thing is, uh, as you can see, uh, I you know watch a lot of these videos uh, where other folks have done uh, little Rambo whoops um, over at uh, Micromotor Warehouse. Uh, great channel, by the way, and, and great products. Uh, you've probably seen uh, his Rambo Whoop videos. Uh, and he did this. He reduced uh, the number of blades on his propellers by two. So he made, instead of four blade propellers, he made two blade pro propellers. Uh, I got that idea from him. Uh, none of these ideas are particularly you know, unique or mind-blowing, but I think they helped me make this, again, more enjoyable. So the two blade propellers, in my opinion, even if they reduce thrust a little bit, they increase flight time by a tiny bit. I did notice that. And then the second thing that they do is that uh, because these are such high uh, RPM motors, so these are 59,000 RPM or, or 59,000 kV, I forget. Uh, they're ridiculous RPM <laughs> motors. Uh, and because of it, uh, the four blade props, I think, get in their own way in a lot of ways. You'll get, you do better punch shots, but then uh, in terms of control, uh, these work a lot, lot better. So I cut down the props. That helped a lot. Uh, I had these props from another quadcopter. Uh, the, I think it was the JJRC one. Uh, and I just like the color scheme better because the clear red and black and gray, I think, to me, look really good. So, um, so that was the first thing. Uh, next thing I did is uh, this board usually comes with the micro low C connector. And while that connector is great, and it, and there's a ton of batteries that use it, uh, there's not a ton of these tiny batteries that really fit well 
unless you want to buy a whole bunch for this model particularly particularly and i already had um the other Ishins and the furry bf36 and i have a bunch of those little 45c 150 uh, milliamp per hour uh, batteries laying around and uh they all have you know the uh, mcpx m xcp connector uh, which is the blade standard i think uh, for the inductrix model uh, so what i did is i found a little charger and they sell them for like two bucks uh, on on banggood i'll put the link in the description and i unfortunately you know won't be using it as a charger because i cut <laughs> the charger uh plug so that i could trim these and i didn't want to resolder because uh, these pads can be finicky i i have another board that's almost the same as this one uh, where I had a lot of trouble um, not, you know, bridging some of these little resistors, etc., or bridging it to ground uh, uh, with uh, the USB. So what I did was I just spliced it in, uh, did a little uh, splice into the cable, uh, and then some heat shrink. And you can see there, you get a really awesome uh, connection, and this works amazingly, and uh, it lowers the weight. So... <clears throat> At the end of the video, I'll put in a little quick uh, scale comparison. So, so you can see that I've lowered the weight a bit. So weight matters in these, even fractions of a gram seem to make them perform a lot but a lot better or worse. And that's because it's so tiny, so light. Uh, and the, the I think uh, induction fans also um, can affect that. So in any case, <clears throat> uh, what you see here is uh, I did that. That lower the weight a bit because the other connector is a tiny bit heavier and it's a lot longer actually so that helped too and then uh just something that's optional that i don't think you absolutely have to do but i did and it again lower the weight a bit was this uh battery holder comes with two extra little uh, plastic pieces that hold the battery together or hold the battery in there i should say and you don't actually need that i mean those are there but the battery fits in pretty well without them. So I cut those off and left just the one in the middle. Uh, could probably cut those off as well, but I didn't really feel like it and they hold the battery tighter. So, uh, And they add some structural support because uh, this shouldn't be super stiff because you don't want to break the frame, but the stiffer it is, the better it'll perform. So this is a good compromise. So cut two off uh, and again, that lowered the weight a bit. Uh, trimmed a tiny few other little tiny pieces here and there, but nothing much. I added a little bit of weight back by adding some uh, hot glue to this, but it's only because it does help uh, support the uh, cables better. And if you're plugging and unplugging, uh, you don't want that to pop off. Sometimes these solar joints aren't the absolute best. So doing that helps. Uh, and oh yeah, and I should say, and the camera is just held by a little bit of uh, double-sided tape and I bought a roll of double-sided tape. Uh, it weighs a lot less than super glue or anything else other than maybe some rubber bands. I've seen people do that, but I wanted it at a slightly upward angle, which you can see there. And the um, double-sided tape helped do that. All right, so I'm gonna go get my scale, show you the total weight uh, at the end of these mods. Uh, be right back. All right, so uh, like I said, any little bit of uh, grams count, <laughs> so uh, what I'll do here is I'm going to try to show you if it'll actually show it. Uh, so there you go at zero. So this is it without the battery. Oh, sorry, I'm going to fit that in there so you can see the true weight. So I get it down to 1976, uh, which is pretty damn good. 1976, 1977 is what, I usually, what it usually shows me without the battery. Now, this quadcopter originally with the battery, as stated by Banggood, and I remember doing the test before, it's right about 26, 27 grams. So let's see, uh, with the battery now, what you get is 24.88, which you might say, oh, well, that's just a gram. But as a percentage of the weight and weight to thrust ratio for this, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good improvement. Uh, and the batteries uh, all weigh up right about the same, but uh, for example, this one weighs uh, 511. So uh, 20 grams, that's, sorry, 20 grams for a quadcopter uh, with a F3 board is amazing. <laughs> this thing is a beast. So 
Uh, last thing I want to talk about that I did do that helps a lot is I flashed this board with Betaflight. And it comes with CleanFlight. CleanFlight was fine. It worked well. It was very, very stable, very safe. <laughs> I, uh, I, that was one of my complaints in, in my other video. With this, uh, fl with flashing it with um, flashing it with uh, Betaflight, uh, it's just perfect. It's tuned in. Uh, I put it in. Um, I put in some higher rates and stuff uh, to be able to play with this in Acro and uh, and even Horizon 2 Acro. Uh, transitions are really really amazing you can do some cool flips uh some cool stuff uh obviously cl crash a lot <laughs> which i've crashed this one a good bit uh, but it's amazing so you can do a bit of beta flight flashing uh one of the things i found is that unlike other boards for some reason i couldn't get this one to flash immediately when i plugged it into beta flight don't know why um other boards i found no problem doing it without the boot pins uh and so it does have boot pins they're tiny i don't know if you can see but they're tiny, tiny little uh, pads right there. Uh, you are probably gonna have to bridge those. I tried bridging those with just a screwdriver or with a, uh, by putting it, you know, a little uh, metal connector there so that the electrons would flow while plugging it in. Didn't work. So I did have to actually solder the boot pads um, in order to uh, flash it. Once you flash it, then you can unsolder and you're good to go. Uh, and I believe the board target is SPRF uh, FO3 or SPRF FO3 I should say uh, in beta flight so you can I had to flash it through clean flight uh, and then I was able to use beta flight perfectly and uh, it's awesome I, I'll try to again um, do a really quick uh, flying video but this one's already longer than I expected it to be I promised a quick short video I thought it was gonna be like five minutes <laughs> As you can see, it's a lot longer than that. I hope you like it. I hope you like and subscribe. Um, I'm really excited about doing these little re reviews. Uh, and I'll put the links for all these things in my uh, description. They're all, again, my affiliate links. If you click on them and buy something through the site, you're going to help me out. Uh, and it'll allow me to buy more of these uh, quads and do videos and reviews and things that you might want to see uh, to help you. Uh, get into the hobby. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'm always happy to answer. So far, I've tried to answer every single question I've gotten, uh, which aren't a ton, but I'll try to keep that up. And I really appreciate your uh, support. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.